So right now, we're less than a year and a half away from what will be one of the most interesting midterm elections we've seen in quite a while. And that doesn't really say much because midterm elections are normally not that interesting nor exciting. But this is America in the year of our Lord 2021, and next year will be 2022. And as it stands, it's looking like it's going to be a rather interesting midterm year, on par with 2018. So this will be quite an interesting midterm election, since it's going to be the first post-Trump midterm. Now, it's really just... That's not really saying that much, since Trump only had one midterm as president. But it's still going to be interesting to see what America votes like in the post-Trump era. And next November will give us our first good glimpse at that. And it will be quite consequential. And it will determine a lot of things as to where we're going in the next presidential election. So, to begin with... Let's see what the midterms will be about. Now, clearly, this is going to be a referendum on the Democratic Party, to be more specific, President Joe Biden. Now, right now, Joe Biden's approval rating is good, but it's not great. His approval rating today, at the, at the time this video is being recorded, is 52.2% against a disapproval rating of 42.8%. This is good, but compared to presidents in previous history, not that great. And there's no guarantee it'll stay in the 50s as we head into into the future, especially the elections next year. Normally, presidents' approval ratings tend to go down. Every single president has seen this. Barack Obama saw it. George W. Bush saw it. Bill Clinton saw it. All the presidents saw it. Donald Trump is kind of an exception to this rule, but even he saw it. I mean, his approval rating has gone down into the 30s. It was typically in the low 40s, but it did go down into the low 30s when he was having really, really bad days. And he did have a lot of those. So Biden's approval rating will be crucial going into next year. If If his approval rating stays as stable as it's been six months in, then Democrats will likely have a good midterm. But if not, Republicans will sweep back the House. And that's going to be an interesting thing if Republicans take back the House and perhaps the Senate because the 2024 election is going to be somewhat reflected in the 2022 midterms. Now, I wouldn't have said this for any midterm before, and I don't think it was wise to view elections in the scope of a midterm, but right now, with how partisan we've become, midterms do tell us some stuff as to where we're headed. And there is one man who really has a lot depending on this midterm election, and that man is former President Donald Trump. Now, why? Well, the reason for this is because, let's face it, He wants to run again in 2024. He does not want to go down in history as the one-term president that was defeated. He wants to go down in history as the guy who, in his mind, was cheated, which he wasn't. He lost fair and square. And got back the White House four years later. So basically, he wants Joe Biden to be like John Quincy Adams. Yeah. Um, So this midterm election will determine whether or not Donald Trump can run. And if Republicans have a good midterm, and if Trump Republicans have good performances, Donald Trump is likely going to want the White House. Donald Trump is likely going to be super encouraged to run again. In fact, he's looking at these midterms as an indicator as to whether or not he has a shot in 2024. Now, the reason I don't think we should reflect on midterms is because They don't actually tell you how the next presidential election will go. And Barack Obama is a good example of this. Coming right off the heels of his 2008 landslide victory, Republicans gave Democrats the shellacking of a lifetime. They came back, they got the House back in the biggest swing in decades. I don't know whether it was the Great Depression or the 60s, but it was sometime in the mid-20th century that there was a swing... Um 
anywhere near as big as the ones Republicans had in 2010. And then two years later, Barack Obama comfortably won re-election. It almost matched his 2008 map. Almost. And 2014 was an even worse year for uh, Democrats, as Republicans then took back the Senate by a pretty comfortable margin. And in 2016, it did kind of reflect the midterms, but that wasn't entirely a guarantee, because... As we know, Democrats chose to nominate someone deeply unpopular, and two negatives put everything into toss-up territory. But then the 2018 midterms came around, and actually, I think Donald Trump's 2020 performance should show us that midterms don't mean that much, because Democrats had a decent 2018, and then lost seats in the House two years later, and Donald Trump won the Ohio uh, election by as much as he did in 2016, even though in 2018, Chantel Brown, a Democrat senator from there, won comfortably in Ohio that election. And Democrats thought, oh, maybe Ohio is going to go blue this time. No, it didn't happen. Ron DeSantis only narrowly won Florida. And then Donald Trump won it by a landslide in 2020. Democrats thought, oh, maybe, maybe this could indicate it's getting closer. Overall, this midterm should not determine 2024 but because most americans and donald trump included tend to view midterms as an indicator i think donald trump will be encouraged to run more than ever now i don't think donald trump is not going to run in any scenario i think democrats could take every single seat and trump is still going to run he wants back the white house one way or another but this will give donald trump an answer in terms of the electorate as to whether or not it is safe for him to run again and whether or not he should run again and what this means is 2022 is going to be a proxy biden versus trump election because joe biden has a lot to ride on and again his approval rating is quite well like i said it is good but not great joe biden has to defend his narrow blue majority and i don't know if he's going to be able to do it in the house but in the senate he may be able to so this is going to determine what the country feels like in terms of the two men who let's face it are in control of the party in this of the parties in this country and uh what does it say that two old men in their 70s in cognitive decline are arguably the two most powerful people on the planet but i digress This seems like it will be a proxy Biden versus Trump election, which may or may not lead us straight into the rematch of Biden and Trump, in which I don't know what will happen then, but this election could give us a preview of sorts. Or not. Again, two years is a lot of time in midterms don't determine presidential elections. Midterms are a referendum on Congress, not the president. Congress has a low approval rating, Biden does not. And I think Trump is more popular than Congress as well. Now, what do I think the outcome looks like as it stands? Well, I I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. There is a lot of uncertainty, and again, it's a year and a half out. Anything could happen. But what I feel will happen is Republicans will win back the House. However, they will narrowly win back the House. It will not be a 2010 level swing. It doesn't look like Republicans have it in them. They've lost too much ground in the suburbs. And in urban areas, they're just irrelevant. However, they do have the rural um, support where Democrats are irrelevant. And there are many rural districts. Gerrymandering may also help Republicans. Republicans will likely take back the Senate. And it will probably be a majority of anywhere from 5 to, I want to say, 20 of Republicans are super lucky seats, but I don't think that Republicans are going to have a sweep in the House. They're just not. We're too partisan for anyone to have a big sweep. The Senate is an open question, and it could go either way, and I actually, at this current moment, think if Biden's approval rating stays the way it is, and things stay the way they are in the country, may stay in the favor of Democrats. It will be decided by the seats, I feel, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania looks like it will be interesting. It depends on who Democrats nominate. There are retirements going on. Uh, Wisconsin is is another question. Remember, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia were all won by Joe Biden. 
Wisconsin and Pennsylvania look like they're going to stay blue in 2022. Maybe Pennsylvania flips. Maybe Wisconsin flips. I don't know if Republicans have it in them, especially if the Republican candidates um, tend to be more Trumpist. However, these are Rust Belt states, and Trumpism has a special place in the Rust Belt. He took them in 2016, and he lost them by a hair in 2020, and these states voted for Obama massively. So the fact that these states were in razor-thin margins, that they're always coming down to coin flips, maybe they do. Maybe they... Maybe... Maybe Trumpists can take it. I don't know how the country feels about Trumpism, but I do know Trumpism is more electable than people want to let on. Georgia is an open question as well. Right now, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do feel that because Georgia still has Republican DNA in it, even though it won for Biden by just 10,000 votes, could go back to Republicans next year. Remember, uh, the $2,000 check promise was kind of broken when we got $1,400 uh, stimulus checks instead. That may disappoint some people. Um, but these states will decide the outcome. Georgia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. It's way too early to tell where they're going, but they will decide the outcome. Another thing, and this is perhaps a big indicator, turnout will be key. If there is low turnout it is more likely than not Republicans will have a good 2022. If Because low turnout tends to include more partisan voters. People who will always vote no matter what. High turnout means a lot more undecided voters or independent-leaning voters came out to vote. Turnout means everything. If there is high turnout, generally you assume the Democrat is favored, but what 2020 showed us with both Donald Trump and Joe Biden blasting records, each uh, reaching a popular vote total, not that possible months before the election. It, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, anything could decide this. Anything could decide this. But if turnout is high, generally assume Democrats may do better than you would have expected. But maybe Republicans can defend and still take the House. If turnout is super high, I think that Republicans will probably take back the House by a single-digit majority margin, and they will not get the Senate. But again, everything is an open question. And regardless of what happens in 2022, it will not be a dual moment. And right after 2022 is over, we get the focus on the 2024 presidential election which I'm not sure anyone wants to focus on because we just came out of another election. But this is America in the year 2021, and we're now always in the middle of a presidential election in some way, shape, or form. So, that's that. Thank you for watching this video, if you made it this far, and we'll see what happens going forward. Peace.